Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman, and what a privilege it is to be here with our guests today. You know, before I get into the substance of my comments, I, I feel really compelled to um, address some of the mischaracterizations of the bank. Um, and I am very disturbed that this debate has been hijacked by straw men arguments. Uh, and I struggled to understand how this debate had become so detached from the reality of how the bank operates. Uh, that is, until I um, read the story in, uh, in the Hill about how Senator Cruz's support of the uh, lack of support of the bank, uh, despite strong support uh, of the bank from small businessmen in Texas, uh, and his characterization of this being low-hanging fruit. Low-hanging fruit, of course, being proxy language for the bank being low-hanging fruit in pursuit of a larger goal of really dismantling any kind of governmental assistance, really the sort of Tea Party argument that government should not help anybody, uh, and really the larger goal of dismantling Social Security, Medicare, uh, and the entire social safety net. Okay, tangent is over. So in response to the realities of global competition in business and in recognition that the bank is U.S. job creation engine, it is a U.S. job creation engine. Reauthorization in the past has been bipartisan. And we have very little legislative time before the current authorization expires on June 30th. We have a majority of the House, not a majority of Democrats, a majority in the House supportive of reauthorization. We have legislative language with co-sponsors uh, demonstrating that. And I hope that we can, this hearing will reset the debate and be grounded in fact. The bank is not a government-funded utility that offers below market financing terms. Is not. Um, and uh, I'll take, I'll yield the rest of my time to the gentlelady from California, the ranking member uh, of our committee, Ms. Waters.